Hello and welcome to another video from the AHF. This is an article about the um, small sword, which is um, a weapon which we don't study as a primary weapon in the club. We have practiced it, we do study it from time to time. I own several originals and I own some training swords um, of this type as well. So I want to give you sort of an overview of the sort of weapon, what it is, um, what we call a small sword, uh, how it relates to all the different weapons we use, and also what I think of it personally as a weapon. Uh, the interesting thing about a small sword is that it has its origins, um, or sorry, sorry, sport fencing has its origins in this exact weapon. This one I'm holding here is um, what we would call a colic mard. Um, and if my French, pronun French pronunciation is off on that, please let me know. It's, it's something like that. Um, I'm not much of a, uh, a French speaker, but um, the colic um, or colic is this sort of blade type that has a very very broad set of sort of uh, triangular shaped blade section which tapers after its fort or strong to a much narrower section which is still triangular and also hollowed out and is in its, in essence very very similar to um, a modern epee blade for the sport fencing um, so this is kind of um, the origins of sport fencing in many ways this particular one is from about 1730. It's stamped up with um, um, the crown of one of the uh, Georges, so it's, it's actually a civilian sword for a military officer. Um, but that doesn't really tell you anything about the sword itself. The, the, the small sword was carried as a weapon of self-defense. It was not a battlefield weapon. It was purely carried for self-defense and also fashion. Now, of course, many swords have been carried for both of those purposes. Uh, and they kind of vary in terms of their um, emphasis uh, of sort of one over the other. Uh, and in my personal uh, opinion, I would say the small sword is one that emphasizes fashion a little bit more than function of self-defense than some of the swords that sort of um, came before it. Uh, now, obviously, I'm a rapier instructor, so I'm going to be a little bit biased, and uh, I'm sure people will say that. Some small sword users will absolutely hate me for my opinion on the small sword, uh, at the same time, I can appreciate it as a weapon. I quite like it. I've got some originals, but I will give you my honest opinion on what I think of it. Um, the small sword, first of all, where it came from, well, it looks like a small rapier, um, if you like. And a lot of people would call it a rapier. I mean, this one doesn't have a knuckle bow. Some did and uh, some didn't. I mean, for example, this is another original that I've got which does have a knuckle bow. So. Um, it's not missing from this sword, it's just that some of them didn't have it. They kept the knuckle bow because it's basically tradition from earlier swords. It's not really necessary when you've got a sword that doesn't actually have a cutting edge, because this knuckle bow is designed to really protect you against cutting attacks. Um, so, okay, the small sword. You're talking about a sword that is, as it sounds, small sword. It is very small, no doubt. It's like a very downsized rapier. When a rapier would on average weigh between 1 kilo and 1.3 kilos, a small sword would only weigh between 350 and maybe 550 grams. Um, I mean, those are rough averages. There can be a few things either way of that sort of scale. Um, but you're talking very, very light compared to a rapier. Typically half the weight of a rapier or less. Uh, also a lot shorter, um, the blade length on this. And I'm sorry if I always mix up metric and imperial, it's just the way I've grown up. But um, the typical small sword, this sort of 18th century small sword, they're normally around about 30 inch blade length. And when you look at most sort of earlier, sort of first half of the 17th century rapiers, they're typically more like 42 to 45 or more. So the small sword is very short compared to a rapier, very light compared to a rapier, and with a lot less hand protection. And um, in terms of why it has all those features? Well, there are a few things. Um, firstly, it's short enough that it can be worn flush or, or straight down your leg, uh, which is beneficial, if you like, to the bustling cities of the time that were sort of really uh, building up. Uh, it's not going to get in the way, as seen with the hilt, much, much smaller. But also just the sort of the way fashion was changing at the time. It's easier to carry. It fits better with the sort of clothing people are wearing. Um, and small swords tend to have little to no cutting edge at all um, to the level that you'll see almost no cutting action whatsoever typically none sometimes a few sort of tip slashes but realistically no actual cutting with a small sword so even if they taper down to an edge it's not they're not tapering down to an edge to be sharp for cutting it's more just the construction of the swords to get it light enough 
to a point and be good on the point. So this one, for example, has edges that are quite narrow, but you wouldn't think of them as cutting edges by any means. Um, the actual taper of the blade, it's, it, it's so broad, for example, because of this triangular section that there's very little taper towards the edge, so it's not particularly sharp. Um, this one, for example, is, you know, not far off as blunt as some training swords. It's, anyway, that's the way a small sword normally is. Um, they're not sharp on the edges. So you could grab them and you wouldn't expect to actually cut with them. They are a point-based weapon. Um, they existed um, essentially in a transitional form as rapiers became smaller and lighter um, approximately in the middle of the 17th century. It varies a little bit from time to time. For example, in Spain, they held onto the cup hilt um, rapiers an awful lot longer than most places held onto rapiers. Although saying that, um, these Spanish cup hilts became lighter and smaller and kind of were becoming a small sword that looks a bit like a cup hilt rapier anyway. Um, that gives you kind of an over overview of the sword. Um, this one is um, English actually and it's, it's marked up with a, a crown stamp. It dates to about 1730. It's uh, the College Mart or um, College Mart um, blade construction which is very very broad at the base and it flares out quickly after the force or strong, it's triangular section. Um, it is the forebear of the epee, the sport fencing epee. This is exactly where the epee came from. You can tell from the blade construction. And this was very, very popular in uh, a period, basically early 18th century, for around about 30 or 40 years. Um, and it lasted, in essence, until swords were no longer carried. Which, for civilian use, which is late 18th century, um, where civilians weren't carrying swords anymore. Uh, they didn't always have this kind of blade construction. You will find um, small swords like this, for example, still triangular shape, but without the characteristic um, colichamard or colichamard um, sort of blade type. Uh, this is a much later, late 18th century small sword. Uh, now, in terms of how do they compare to everything we do, well, you will often see um, the spadroon coming up in um, sort of conversations of our videos. Um, this is a spadroon compared to a small sword. Um, even with a um, Kalishimad um, sort of blade, this still looks quite substantial. Uh, and this looks even more substantial in many ways in profile. The reality is this is a 450 gram sword. This is a uh, 700 gram sword. So you're talking a massive difference between the two. They're also the same length and have equivalent guards. Uh, the guard is a bit more substantial, I, I suppose, in this, but not much. It's mostly in the blade. And the spadroon is a militarised version of the small sword. So this is the kind of sword being carried in civilian self-defence. This is the kind of sword being carried for officers who have been trained to use this and want to use similar technique and um, what they've learnt from this in war with this. So there's a spadroon, and this one is a French one. I've shown you in the past um, the British um, 1796 pattern spadroon. This one is a 1821 uh, gendarme uh, sword, which is um, French paramilitary. The gendarmes they st still exist today, but uh, it's essentially a military pattern um, spadroon for the French. Uh, and if you see in this one is, is actually double-edged as well as opposed to my single-edged uh, British pattern. So yeah, the um, spadroon, uh, sorry, sorry, the small sword is, in essence, the ancestor of the epee. Now, the epee is obviously what they use in Olympic fencing today, and um, you can see kind of how it's evolved, essentially, is that they've dropped this uh, Kalishimad uh, construction completely. It still tapers to a, a wider um, sort of uh, a thickness than it is at the tip, but it's comparatively thin. The bowl has got a substantial bit larger, and also these pistol grips have developed. But um, in actual fact, the epee blades are quite good representatives of the small sword. If you want to actually practice small sword, it's um, quite beneficial. The downside is they're a bit too long, so you need to use a junior blade or um, shorten an adult blade. But um, yeah, the epee blades are quite good. You just you don't want to be using these pistol grips, and you need a smaller bowl than that because it's absolutely gigantic. Um,
What do I think of it as a weapon? Now, small sword users will hate me for this because I'm a rapier practitioner and I didn't just sort of come to rapier and think oh, everything else is terrible. I actually use loads of different other swords and different types. I like lots of different types and I can appreciate lots of different types and I use them myself and experiment. And what I've found with the small sword is I find that it's martially unsound. And what it comes down to is this. The first point, it cannot cut. And I find that a sword that cannot cut um, in a, an armoured situation, which is what this is going to be used in, is too much of a compromise. In Reiki, for example, there is still plenty of cutting, uh, an awful lot of cutting. It's not the primary source of attack, but there's still a lot. And it's a primary way that we stop people closing against us. They kind of aggressive opponents who go into hanging parries, we cut around. It's the stuff you just can't do with a small sword. So I don't think um, it's martially sound for the basis that it cannot cut. It's a massive problem. The next one is that it's so incredibly light and so incredibly fast on the disengage and the double disengage that I think the number of double hits is just unacceptable to a weapon of self-defense. Now saying that, I also think that the rapier solo is not particularly suited to self-defense either. I think it needs to be used with a companion weapon like a, a dagger ideally. But the small sword was intended specifically to be used solo and therefore I'm going to judge it on that basis. Um, yeah, I think it's martially unsound. I think it's interesting. It's a bit of fun to spar with. Would I ever actually want to use it to defend my life with? Hell no. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's kind of interesting. They're pretty, they're dainty, they look nice with sort of fashionable clothing of the 18th century. Um, but I'm really not a big fan. And you'll see they don't actually have as much in common with the rapier um, as they're at my first seam. For example, these finger rings, most of them are not actually intended to wrap the, the finger rounds. It's too tight to actually get a comfortable grip in it. They're really just there for fashion, the same way that the uh, knuckle bow remained on some of them. So it's actually more designed for resting thumb on the uh, sort of flat and index finger behind it for these kind of actions. Because again, you've got no edges. So like sport fencing, you engage on either edge. Well, there aren't actual edges per se. So you haven't got a true edge and a false edge and worries about flats because a blade of this triangular section is effectively just as stiff and strong in every direction. Um, so there you go, there's the small sword. The small sword is a latter part of the 17th century and 18th century gentleman's weapon of self-defense and obviously dueling, but almost every sword is a weapon for dueling in its time and place. Uh, am I a fan of it? No. I think it's kind of curious, but I don't like it. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and uh, keep watching our videos. Thank you.